And I, well, either, I'm going to play Days Gone because I got to go to work tonight at midnight. So I'm going to be playing at work at, all night. New York, that's where your tax money's going. To have this jackass play video games on his shift. You are listening to Trophy Horse with your host, Tricky Mick, Alex, I Yield to No One, Steve, and Troy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Trophy Horrors. This is episode 389. I'm your host, Tricky Mick. Along with me, along with Shmi. Shmi? Along with Shmi. Shmi! Hello, everybody, and welcome to Trophy Horrors. This is episode 389. I'm your host, Tricky Mick. Alongside with me, the man, the myth, the legend. Yeah, I'm Alex. not Shmi. I'm not that dickhead pirate who helped kill Rufio. Really? You, you, you couldn't let that go so I could take that out of the show? No. He brings the awesome every single week. It's I yield to no one. Hi. I'm not Shmi, by the way. Yeah, so now I'm going to have to delete the second intro. <laughs> I hate you both. Uh, either way, it was a cut out of the show. All right, so I'm back, and uh, I can speak for myself since Alex and you would like to spread lies about me. Yes, that's what we do. Uh, no, you literally messaged us before the show. Hey, should I do the show or keep playing Days Gone? No, that's not what I said. No, that, See? That, that, Lies. That, that, was, that was this week, that, not last week. Last week, he, he didn't get any sleep. Yeah. I was, uh, I haven't, still not getting any sleep. I'm getting like an hour or two a night. This week, he was going to blow us off and play Days Gone. I told him no, because I want to play Days Gone. So he's going to record so we can go play Days Gone. Okay. I wasn't blowing you off. I asked... How likely is it that you guys record without me so I can keep playing? And you said none, so I said, okay. Is that, and, and in essence, you were going to blow us off. I was never going to blow you off until you both said, yeah, okay, go ahead. Go play Days Gone. And I knew I wasn't going to get that from Alex because Alex doesn't turn on his PlayStation all week. He's been playing his Switch. He switched yeah, it up. I'm not going to be playing on the uh, PlayStation until I, I need to download what remains of me to finish and play that. But other than that, I'm not really looking to play anything on the PlayStation. Well, are are you going to be picking up uh, Crash Team Racing in June? <laughs> oh, you know it. Oh, I know it. You need to buy Days Gone, Alex. No, no, I don't. He wasn't thrilled with it, or wasn't it? Well, sorry, sorry. the The trailers didn't sink, didn't hook him. There we go. That's what I wanted to say. All right, so let's get into our updated trophy count. Then we'll go into why Alex should be playing Days Gone. Well, yeah, because you and I got it. You and I, you want to talk to me when when I had played it. So we've pl- I played and you weren't here last week. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. So it's cool. It happens. Uh, okay, I am level 39. Total trophies of nine thousand nine hundred and sixty nine. With a plaque count of one eighteen. Alex, not in front of me. Do it for me. He is a level 31 with a trophy count of 6,856 and 102 Platinums in 101 games. Why don't you ever have the agenda pulled up, Alex? Because I can talk when you introduce the topics. That's why I like when you host. Besides, my trophy count hasn't gone up any. It hasn't moved in three no. weeks. I got the God of War Platinum, and I'm like, I'm out. Peace! All right, Yield. Oh, you want me to do my trophy count? Okay. So, I am currently a level 28 with a trophy count of 5778 and holding steady with a platinum count of 90. That's what happens when you play a lot of open world games and you're playing World of Warship Legends. You kind of level out at the moment. And I don't think I earned a trophy this week. Steve is level 15 total trophy. It doesn't matter what Steve is. That's true. 2145, it's still with 11 Platinums. And Sid is level 38, total trophies of 8,796 with 162 Platinums. All right, so before we get into what we're playing, actually, you know what? Let's get into what we're playing because I actually have a question for you gentlemen. 
So we'll we'll talk about what we're playing, and then somewhere in the process, I'll ask the question. Okay. Uh, the only thing I've been playing all week is Days Gone. I have not played Division Two in two weeks. <gasps> Ubisoft will send you hate mail. Uh, my crew is very upset with me. They uh they they keep talking shit about me. Are they going to disband I... you? <laughs> well, I'm the commander of our our clan. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that one guy is really pissed that you're not there, Tricky. I'm sure they could do a hostile takeover. I mean, you know, go into the dark zone. Bang! What happens in a dark zone stays in a dark zone. Uh, we have 41 people in our clan there, Alex. <laughs> and you're the uh, leader? But... <laughs> Are these sweet mama these classmates? Negative. Uh, but my squad, the people that I normally run with, they actually sent me a message saying that there's uh, they're playing a mutiny to take over. <laughs> I told ya. But I told them they I, I told them once I get the platinum and days gone, I'll be back to division two. So now here is my question to you folks. Um if a game becomes too difficult, at some point, do you, is it okay to use some kind of a cheat? Not a hack, a cheat to pass that part. Uh, how long were you stuck? Or let's say not you in general, even though that's what you're getting at. How long would would, would you consider being stuck before using a cheat? I would say you have to have attempted to beat it at least 20 or 30 times. I, I think I'd be kind of okay with it at that point. Well, let me just get my counter on my desktop and just count out the tries as I do them. Okay, stop being a smartass, but it's a legit question because the reason Hold I... Hold on, two things. Uh, okay. Do you consider Go like going to YouTube or looking at a walkthrough on GameFAQs to be cheating? No, I'm talking about a, a legit cheat. Now, I, I know I've heard there are things out there like, uh, you know, the PlayStation 4's version of the Game Genie. I don't know what it's called because I never actually looked it up. Really, those those things still exist. It, it's it's not a game genie, but it's it's something where you, you you take your save off the PlayStation, you put it into your computer, uh, you upload it to them, they download it back to you, and there's some kind of a cheat in there, whether it be uh, all collectibles found or unlimited health or max health, whatever the che- cheat may be. Now, the reason I ask this question is because I found a particular part frustrating that I couldn't beat it. I eventually did beat it. Are, are you talking about what we talked about, the airplane? Yes. Um, so I, I ultimately did beat it and didn't have to use a cheat. But my, but when I was doing the research, like I was talking about going to YouTube and stuff like that, So somewhere in the comments it said that Days Gone actually has a feature in it that if you fail a certain section a number of times, and it wasn't defined how many times, the game actually just allows you to skip that fight and move on as if you completed it. Didn't another game do something like that, that if you failed so many times, it kind of dumbed down the difficulty? Well, there's many games that like that it will ask you, do you want to lower the difficulty? You know, but this... You- good- so, so no, I was gonna say it lowered the difficulty till you got by that, and then kind of kicked it back up if you started doing better. You're saying it just legitimately just skips the whole confrontation as if you completed it. Yeah, well, you, what you're talking about there's two different circumstances. There's one that if you fail enough times, the game will ask you, "Do you want to lower the difficulty?" And then you stay at that difficulty for the rest of the time. There's other games that uh, have variable difficulty, that don't have a difficulty setting, that the game just gets harder or easier depending on your interactions. If you're you're coming to a certain part of a game and you can't beat it, it will slowly lower the difficulty until you can beat it. But then as you move on in the story and you start to plow through everybody, the game will increasingly get harder. So you're talking about two different situations. Oh, okay. Now, with Days Gone, I've never seen this. I don't know if this is true. But in the comments, it said that once you, like, like if you come across a horde and you cannot legit beat that horde, 
after a certain number of failed times, the game will just kill the horde and you move on as if you've beaten it. That feels rather anticlimactic. Yes, but that led me to my question is, if the if a game developer is going to do that, like, what's the difference in going to get, like, a Game Genie to get unlimited health so you can beat that horde? Y'all remember when Nintendo introduced something where you could uh, press a button to play through certain, I think it was a Wii, where you could play, press a button and it would play through certain sections of the game for you, and then you could pick up when you wanted to? That sounds a lot like this. So, but my my question is, if so, if you use like a game genie, is that dishonorable in the trophy hunting world? Because essentially, eventually, you're gonna get the trophy for beating the game, even though you didn't complete all sections of it. I mean, there is a uh, there was a podcast here on the PG Network called Press X to Win. So, I mean, in general, in many ways, it seems like they're trying to make games easier to beat so that people actually play all the way through the game. I've honestly, like, I talked about this on the last week's show with Yield. I went and back and played Bayonetta, and there was a particular level, specifically because of a particularly hard boss fight against Jean, that I had to turn down the difficulty to easy. I have never, ever had to skip a boss fight or anything like that, or any or use a game genie code to get past a certain section of a game. Like... No matter how hard it's been, that, that to me takes the enjoyment out of the game because I'm not doing it myself and I'm not actually beating the entire game. Like, I want the satisfaction, even if for, for a moment that I have to kick it down, I want to be able to get through it all myself. Okay, Yield? I think I'm more of a fan of the variable difficulty. That way it scales it to how you're playing. Um, I, I can understand of of the developer doing that in the game of, well, you, you failed X amount of times. So we're just going to move on, but it still feels kind of tainted because you technically never defeated said boss or said horde. They just kind of went, well, you suck. So, (laughs) so we're, we're going to move it on. But I, but I can understand of, of how difficult that they say that, like with these hordes can be that they don't want people to get to the point that, well, I'm done. I can't get by this. Right. And that, and that's my devil's advocate point of view is like Alex was saying that, you know, he wants to be everything legit and I get that. But in a game like days gone, where like the story's not that great, but I think they should give you the option. Be, be kind of like, Hey, do you want to skip this fight or do you want to keep going? Okay, well, let me. I, I'm sorry. Let me clarify. The, the when I said the game will just skip that, I there is an option whether or not you actually want to skip it. You can you you could choose not to skip it. Well, okay. Well, then in that instance, I'm totally fine with it because I would be like Alex. I'd be like, no, I'm beating this thing, and um, you know, thank you for giving me the option, but no, I'm going to defeat these people. See my my like I'm saying my devil's advocate argument is the fact that like I want to like I'm to the point now where I want to know how this story ends like it's the the, the story's not that great but I still want to know how it ends and if I'm stuck behind this horde that I can't beat then I'm never gonna see the ending and that would really make me soil so if I had the option after numerous times of failing to just okay I I don't have to complete this horde. Then, yeah, I, I'm okay with it as well. I don't know, like video games and the achievements you do in those games, like you know whether trophies are significant to you. It's it's up to each person. So how you want to play games or what you want to do in those games, whether you you know want to go out and spend the money on loot boxes or you know you want to buy into EA's pay to win thing or you want to go out and, and unlock things through paying for them. That's up to each person. So you know my personal play style. I you know everyone knows it. I want to. Play games I like. I, I you know I want to get through them. I want to have the satisfaction of beating them on my own without too much help. But you know if that's the way you want to play, I mean that's legitimate to you. So I can't legitimize the way you play. All right, uh, I I will we'll move on and then I'll ask uh, one of you guys what you've been playing. But I also want to point out uh, if true, and again I'm all going from the comments from a YouTube video, so I don't know anything if this if everything we just talk about like the skip horde option is available. But they, the person also did say that 
if you do choose to skip the horde, you do not get the trophy for be- beating the horde. So you'd have to play through the game again to get the trophy. Well, no, no. There, there's a trophy for defeating your first horde. Okay. Okay. A uh, little bit of a spoiler, but not really a spoiler. You legit, so far, as far as my progress, have to fight two hordes. Okay. Uh, when talking to the developers at PAX, uh, they said that uh, you don't have to defeat all the hordes, but you have to beat a minimum of three. And I've now done three, more than three hordes. So I'm thinking that the three that they're talking about that you legit have to beat are all story related. Oh, okay. But there's 40 hordes total in the game. I was going to say, I was seeing stuff when at certain parts of the map where, you know, hey, there's, you know, you got this, that, you know, historical marker, yada, yada, you know, you know what I'm saying. Right. Collectible stuff and that there were hordes to knock out. And I thought there was a trophy based on finding ev- or knocking everything out. No, I, I, I've i beaten legit, I think, six hordes now. Okay. And I didn't, I got a trophy for beating my first one. And I did not get one for be- beating my third. So I'm thinking that the third horde is story, story related. related. That makes sense. If they said that you only have to legit beat three, they would all be story related then. Right. All right. So, uh, Yield, what have you been playing? So I've been playing some Days Gone. Like you and I were talking pre- before we got started. Um, I, I haven't been able to play any since Tuesday night. Because I've been busy Wednesday through Saturday, so and so I haven't. I'm hoping that when we get done recording, I'm gonna jump back in and knock some more out. Um, and I've been playing some World of Warship Legends. Been getting my daily goal this weekend. They had a a weekend kind of a weekend uh, campaign set up, so I got my stuff for Saturday and Sunday, and then. Uh, yesterday the guys came over and we played some everybody's golf and Rocket League. Oh, uh, one more thing. Uh, two more things about Days Gone. Sorry. Uh, pro tip. Uh, if you're playing the game, just be aware that the game constantly, and I do mean constantly, is making save files. Uh, currently on my PlayStation 4, I have 641 save files for Days Gone. Really? Yeah. Go into your sentence and just go to application, save data, sentence, whatever it is. Yeah. And then look at your stores, uh, your system stores, and then look on Days Gone, and you'll see, like, there's a line of save files. So how do you know? So the only way you can tell which one's the current one is a timestamp. Don't even do that because I I had a timestamp of where I was, and then I started the game on a different console, I took all the save files over to the new console, started on the new console, and then it put me three hours back in timeline. Really? Yeah. So, pro tip, don't play the game on multiple consoles. And if you're going to, uh, use the save game feature, which you can only use next to a bed or your bike. That leads me to my second pro tip. Just be aware that the game sometimes glitches out, and when you go to save your game the way I just told you to, it will just turn off your system. That happened once. I uh, I normally save. I don't save uh, any other way than by my bike or at the bed, and, or if it auto saves because you know sometimes you get the auto save and be like, okay, this is a good spot to stop. the f- The first time I played the game, I was saving for the night, and I'm like, well, I'm nowhere near a bed. So I'll just go up and I saved by the bike. And as soon as it was done saving, the TV went blank. I, I was like, man, what, ha- yeah, what happened? And then I figured out my system shut itself off. I turned it back on to make sure like it didn't bork or anything. And no, it just straight shut itself off. See, mine, when I choose the save game option, it just shut my system off. And then I restarted it to make sure that everything was fine. And that the save file that I was going to make is now corrupted, so I had to resave over it. See, I, I luckily didn't have that. It saved. I went to the bike, hit hit tr- hold triangle, it saved, and as soon as it was done saving, pfft, nothing. Yeah. So th- those are two pro tips. Uh, 
for some reason, there's a glitch where you go to save your game, it'll just shut your system off. Nice. Yeah, so if that happens, immediately start your game back up and then try to save again. Otherwise, your chances are your save file could be corrupted. Uh, which I understand now is a, a uh, an argument for why Alex should not play Days Gone. But Alex, I, and I would yield here, I'm going to say that if, you, if you're going to play Days Gone, just remember one thing. If you like The Last of Us, you will like Days Gone. I mean... <clears throat> One of the reasons I liked The Last of Us so much is because of the story. It doesn't sound like it's there, that's that there in this game nearly as much. No, the story definitely, definitely could use some help in this. But then again, I'm I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna say this is coming from a a studio that this is their really first four you know first I want to say foyer, but that's the wrong Foray. word. Foray. There you go. Uh, in a big AAA game. And don't give me Siphon Filter. I was going to say, are you talking shit about Yields, baby? Yeah, I mean, come on, man. They did Siphon Filter. They did Golden Abyss. Well, okay, but that's not... Okay. I, I know, know what I know what you're saying. At, at the time when Siphon Filter came out, it was... No one cared about it. And then it, it took off with fans, and it became the, the juggernaut that it was. This has been hyped to no end, so this is a big game for them. This is a big deal. Now, did you see the article I sent you saying that uh, this is the spiritual successor to Siphon Filter? No, I'll have to read that. Now, I saw it in the chat. I saw something that you linked in the chat, something about Easter eggs, but I wasn't going to click on it because I didn't want nothing spoiled. Yeah, well, the the Easter eggs is not really... uh... It just says Days Gone's uh, Days Gone Easter Egg suggests it's really a siphon filter sequel where Gabe and Leon failed to save the world. You know, I guess when I finish the game, I will take that into consideration. Now, I never played siphon filter, so I don't know what that's referencing. Well, it's been a long time, but there was the main thing behind siphon filter was there was this basically this strain that would wipe out humanity. And that it was stolen, and they're trying to get it back, to not let it get out. If if I remember Siphon Filter. All right. Well, uh, just just to give you uh, something, uh, 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 an article from the uh, uh, an article from well the Post. Um, it says while everyone currently knows Sony Ben's Studios for Days Gone Post. Apocalyptic Carnage. It has another name you might recognize, Siphon Filter. It's an old PS1 classic created back when the studio was still called 989 Studios. It's not a coincidence that there's a trophy called Lend Me Your Ears that you earn for collect- for collecting 989 freak your ear bounties. I noticed that. I'm like, 989, that sounds familiar to me. That would be, that would be why. So Yeah, they were 989 Studios. Okay. So, there. I mean, I I didn't read the article only because of the fact that I'm not. I never played Siphon Filter, but there are similarities saying that the Nero troops look like the people from Siphon Filter and all that other stuff. After you beat Days Gone, go back and check the article and uh, see if it works. Conspiracy I, theorists, I like it. I mean, it it could be a Siphon Filter sequel. It could be. It it it, it might very well. So, uh, wouldn't that be something that that'd be the biggest Easter egg of all? That would be <laughs> they, they come out with the next game, be like, Oh, uh, you guys remember Siphon Filter? Well, it's gonna have it's gonna start Deacon Sync. Uh, yeah, I don't know. The uh, the reference to The Last of Us in Uncharted 3 was pretty good on the newspaper. That was the newspaper in the beginning of the game when they're in the bar. Yeah, uh, all oh, the outbreak did, uh, all right, here's a little Easter egg, and then I'm going to ask Alex what he's been playing because we're getting a little long here. Uh, I, I I found it funny because I, I say, you guys know I say The Last of Us is my favorite game of all time. Yes. I find it funny that the day of the outbreak in The Last of Us is my birthday. You're the end of times. Kill him. <laughs> <laughs> yep, the outbreak happened on my birthday. 
Uh, so happy birthday to me. Alex, what have you been playing, sir? Just more Bayonetta. I beat Bayonetta this week. Super fun game. If you like fast-paced, high-adrenaline third-person action games with great uh, fighting systems, you know, Bayonetta's, Bayonetta 2 is a game for you. Obviously, it's on the Wii U and the Switch, so if you own just a PlayStation or just an Xbox, you can't play it. But if you have a Switch, definitely pick it up, because it's better than the first game, and somehow far more batshit crazy. But I love it, so yeah, Bayonetta 2 is awesome. All right, so let's get into our topics here. And I, I, somehow I just lost the agenda. There we go. All right, so uh, you guys all know that the state of play happened. Yep, I watched it. All right, so uh, I have a bunch of sub articles in the agenda. Um, this is just just in case we want to go into more in depth into the things. Uh, the fir- one of the, the first thing they showed was the Final Fantasy VII remake is back. Uh, after a multi-year absence, Square Enix and PlayStation have revealed the long-anticipated Final Fantasy VII remake. It's been a long time since we saw the remake, and particularly since development moved internally into Square Enix. While the teaser proved to be brief, Square Enix promised more to come about the remake in June, which would line up nicely with the company's plans for an E3 showcase. Until there's a release date, people aren't going to be happy. All right. Well, we do have a release date for Medieval. Medieval will medieval. be coming out on October. Don't say, isn't it Medieval? I call it Medieval. Well, I think it's Medieval. Okay. Well, Medieval is coming out on October twenty fifth. Hey, that's uh, that's awful curious. Right by Halloween. By Halloween, I've been I've been kind of. I I didn't play this the first time around, so I've been kind of waiting to see something. I was kind of. Not thrilled with what I saw on Just Play about that game. And I was kind of disappointed. And I don't know what it was. I just wasn't thrilled. You mean State of Play? Or State of Play. Well, I, I said Just Play. Yeah. You said Just Play. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 and like I said, I don't know what it was. So I'll. Maybe I was in a funk that night. The next <laughs> game in they announced was Predator Hunting Grounds. It's announced for 2020. The developer Ilphonic announced Predator Hunting Grounds, an asymmetrical multiplayer experience that will see one player, one group of players in control of a fire team, while another player controls the Predator. The fire team will have to put its firepower to the test against the Predator and its stealthy and tech-based attacks. Now, you 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 did say something on Facebook about this. Predator game. Oh, this will be awesome. You know, so I'm like, I'm digging it. And then they come out and they're like, hey, it's one versus a squad online. And I'm like, nope, checked out. You lost me. Peace. They, they're starting to, like, developers are starting to make these games like Death by Daylight, uh, Death Garden. I think these games can be intriguing. Evolve, Friday the 13th. Yeah, these games can be interesting. I just don't like that. I hate to say that they're multiplayer only, but that's the only way you could really do those games. No, because you, uh, no, you, you could play with a computer. Okay, but all right. So let me ask you this: Let's say this is single player, not online. You're going to play as the predator every time to take down the team. Okay. That, how many how many times can you do that and it still be fun? If you have different d- different difficulties per person, it could be fun that way. I mean, granted, you're not going to get the same kind of difficulty as you would playing against somebody else. But we know as much as everybody else does that playing with a bunch of the game's only going to be as good as the people playing it. And to and everybody's internet connection and everybody's yeah and and and. M- most people today, and in my opinion, slowly starting to change, but most people today online that you run across are j holes. So, I mean, it, it's going to be hard because, you know, a lot of people don't have mics. Those that do, all they want to do is talk smack instead of, hey, let's work together. And you're really going to have to be able to do that, in my opinion, in that kind of game to be able to hunt the predator. Alex, you interested in this at all? Well, I didn't, I wasn't into Friday the Thirteenth because I heard the trophies were a real grind. But the, uh, I mean, like Jason, like I mean, it does it does have its appeal trying to take down a you know a, a monstrous enemy 
uh, with a team where that monstrous enemy is, you know, stronger than most of all those other characters combined. And I will say that uh, it seemed like before the legal issues, Friday the 13th was actually picking up a lot of steam. It seemed like people were having fun with it. So, I mean, I, I would be willing to try a game like this. I just, to be honest, don't like playing multiplayer online. I mean, like, Rocket League is an exception, but for the most part, you know, aside from Rocket League and Warhawk, I've never really attached to anything online multiplayer-wise. That's because generally I hate playing shooters and fighting games online because that's, you know, unless you lock yourself in your basement and you don't have a job, you can't actually do anything in those scenarios. You can't be good at them. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. And, and the only other games that I play online would be if... Well, I think I'm back. I do play Warships, and Warships is online. But the only other one that I play is, like, if my buddies own it. You know? And it's like, well, okay, hey, let's... We're all getting together, and we're all going to squad up or team up and go. I'll do that. But I have to really like your game to to, to do that. All right, the next game that we're going to talk about is Riverbond. That, uh, that, River- that, that's that... Uh, in a game that looks like Minecraft meets, oh, what did my brother say he thought it looked like? Rock Band? No. The game that he should be playing? No, not Rock Band. <laughs> oh, I can't think of it. But anyway, yeah, it kind of looked like Minecraft meets Zelda. Yeah, it's a, meets... It's a voxel, art, voxel art dungeon crawler that allows four-player co-op, includes cameos from a number of indie game characters, including familiar faces from Shovel Knight, Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time, and Guacamelee. God, they're whoring out Guacamelee and Shovel Knight as much as they can. Those characters and everything. Yes. Uh, it's coming out uh, this summer. Another game they showed, which... Um, okay, I, wasn't, I, will... I was going to mention something, but... I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, the, 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 the couch co-op is nice. That, that That's what's got me a little interested for the game. I'm like, well, at least it's couch co-op. Other than that, I was just kind of like, eh... It, it, there's nothing about it that makes it seem like I, I gotta have it. Uh, another game that I will not be playing is called Away. Uh, you basically run around as a bug and you're trying to get away from things. That's all I can tell you about it. And the last thing they showed is Sony is releasing a limited edition PlayStation 4. This is not a pro. What, what about that survival game? Where you're like a flying squirrel, or not squirrel, or something like that. That's a way? That's a way. That, that was a way? Yeah, I, I was intrigued at first, but then it was like, oh, that doesn't seem very... Yeah. Damn, when is the flying squirrel going to get its due? Can't even get a game started a flying squirrel. Let's get a sugar glider and something. Come on, people. Sony has showcased a special edition PlayStation 4. This is not a pro. This is just a PlayStation 4. Called the Days of Play Edition, it will be part of the Days of Play PlayStation event, which kicks off in June. Uh, if you're interested in what it looks like, it's literally a black PlayStation with the PlayStation symbols on it. I thought they said it was steel gray, and I'm like, it looks black. Um, Could be steel gray? Could be. I don't know. I I'm thought the, that's what I thought, but I'm like, it looks black to me. Uh, okay, so... So, moving on. Moving on. They uh, Okay, so there's two parts of this. I couldn't find the article for the first part we're going to talk about. Um, so, there is DLC coming up for Ghost Recon Wildlands. It was out over the weekend, I thought. It, it is out. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, it is featuring um, John... I can't remember his last name. The voice actor, no, or the, face the guy actor. that the guy that played the Punisher on Netflix also played Shane in The Walking Dead. Yeah, John, uh, John Bernthal. There you go. Uh, so basically, uh, he is being released as a DLC for Wildlands. Yes, there was a uh, he was what's his name Cole Walker. Yes, there was a, uh, I saw it come across the social medias. It was a free, it was last weekend or this weekend, or this past weekend, 
I think it was this past weekend. That it well, was. As of this recording, it was two weekends ago. Yeah, it was two weekends ago. Okay, it was the past weekend because they had the release trailer this week, this past week, for Breakpoint. So yeah, so it was two. It was two weekends ago. They had a thing. Uh, it was a, a special download, free download mission, where he, uh, how they put it, would make you question what was right and what was wrong. Yes. Because they're saying that the Punisher is also a ghost. Yes, when you got to the end of the trailer for Breakpoint. There's only one real ghost, and he's in Game of Thrones. Alright, so... uh, As Yield has spoke about Ghost Recon Breakpoint, uh, gameplay has been revealed and a release date has been announced. Uh, This is the follow-up to Wildlands. Breakpoint is set on the fictional archipelago of Aurora in the Pacific Coast. Set for release on October 4th for the PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. The game will follow on from Wildlands by allowing full four-player co-op across stealth action-focused open world. And it will launch with an unspecified PvP mode. Uh, Of course, it is getting a special edition of the game. New features include a system class, although you could swap between classes freely. Loot in the open world, light survival elements, and prone camo, the ability to slather yourself in mud to avoid detection. Post-launch, the game will get also add endgame raids. Breakpoint feature catches up on Wildlands team leader Nomad, stranded on a fictional Pacific island, and you will be contending with rogue ghost Cole D. Walker, played by John Berthenol. Berthenol. So, there you go. Whatever. How hard is it to say his name? Burnthal. You know what? Fuck it. It's Frank Castle, okay? So, if you did like Wildlands, I'm assuming you're going to like Breakpoint. Never assume. Yes, never assume. Uh, And with that, people assumed that EA Access would eventually come to the PlayStation 4, and it is now coming. Okay, so I know we talk about we would talk about this, so I didn't click on any of the articles. So fill me in. <laughs> what is EA Access? I figured we'd talk about it, so I'm like, I ain't got to read on any of this because Tricky's going to tell me. So tell me, what is EA Access, and why do I need to pay $30 a year for it? All right, uh, EA Access is coming this July to the PlayStation 4. The service gives players to a library of EA games, including franchises like Battlefield, FIFA, Madden, Battlefront, and more. In addition, subscribers can access EA's first play first trials where they can play up to 10 hours of new games without paying for them. EA Access also grants a 10% discount on full EA game purchases and expansions and in-game items and is available for $5 a month or $30 a year. So if you're going to pay for it for six months, you might as well just pay for the 30 and get six months for free. Uh, and can be purchased directly through the PlayStation Store. As of now, it appears paying subscri- as of now, it appears paying for a s- subscription to EA's access on Xbox One will not carry over to the PlayStation Four and vice versa. Well, that makes sense. Well, that, no, that doesn't make sense. Well, it does because they're console exclu- they're, It's console exclusive. So that way, now you can't du- you can't double dip. But if I'm paying EA for a service, I'm paying EA for the service. I'm not paying Microsoft for the service. I'm not pay- paying Sony for the service. I'm paying EA for the service. Uh, okay, valid point. So basically what it means is you're going to be able to, for $30 a year, you're going to be able to play choice EA games for free. Is it like their whole back catalog or just ones that they're handpicking? Ones that they're handpicking. So yeah. just in just in this picture right here, uh, they show N- uh, Madden, FIFA, The Sims, NHL, Battlefield 5, uh, UFC 3, Battlefront 2, and Need for Speed Payback. Yeah, no thank you. <laughs> uh, here, let me see if I can look up to see what games are currently available for EA Access. I will keep my 30 bucks. Let me be clear about this. EA, I choose not to spend any money on your games every year because I don't want to play them. So I'm sure as hell not going to pay 30 bucks a year for access to games that I don't want to play. If you want my money in the first place, 
Make better games. So 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 far, the only thing that EA's got coming down the pipeline that I'm somewhat interested in is uh, Fallen Order. All right, so I'm going to go through this as fast as I can. Just tell me if you're even remotely interested in the game I'm going to announce. These are what's uh, currently available to play with EA uh, Access. Okay. NHL, NBA Live, Madden, Unravel 2, Burnout Paradise Remastered, Fee, UFC, The Sims, Battlefront 2, NBA Live, FIFA 18, Need for Speed Payback, Mass Effect Andromeda, Titanfall 2, uh, I'm not going to mention the sports games anymore, Mirror's Edge Catalyst, uh, Plants vs. Zombies, Garden Warfare 2, Unravel, uh, sports games, sports, sports games, sports games, uh, PGA Tour, I know I didn't say said I wasn't going to mention any more sports games, but that was new. Titanfall, Plants vs. Zombies, Garden Warfare, Peggle 2, Battlefield 4, Dead Space 3, Bejeweled, uh, Battlefield 3, SSX, Mass Effect, Feed and Frenzy, Dragon Age 2, uh, Dead Space 1, 2, and Ignition, Skate 3. Uh, Dante's Inferno, Battlefield 1943, Zoomer's Revenge, Dragon Age Origins, Peggles, Mirror's Edge, Army of Two, Battlefield Bad Company, Dead Space, Mass Effect, Medal of Honor, Airborne, Heavy Weapon, Zuma, Black, which was that shooting game, and Bejeweled 2. Everything else was just sports games. Okay, some of the smaller games I'd probably play, like the Bejeweled and stuff like that. Um, 1943, I probably would, but you're, I don't see how they would, well, I mean, I guess, I guess they would make it available to play on current consoles. Well, actually, you know what? Don't, don't go that way. Cause I actually saw an article, uh, that said that certain games were not going to be available because they, uh, PlayStation didn't have backwards compatibility. So probably most of the small games that I thought about playing, Bejeweled, Feeding, Feeding Frenzy, Peggle. Well, Peggle is available in the store, so you probably be able to play Peggle. 1943, you probably wouldn't be able to play that. That was a three game. Uh, so, yeah. So, it, it, it's not worth the 30 bucks to me. Not since you can not since you can get Peggle and some of them other games on a sale for like five bucks or less. If you like Madden or FIFA... UFC, PGA, if you like your sport games, then you know what? This is probably right up your alley. I'm not big into EA sport games anymore, so no thank you. I would dabble in in FIFA for a little bit, and NHL, I might play a, a little bit, but I... Well, see, I the the, we, the reason... I, I'm going to make an argument for this, and I'm not... Right, as of right now, I'm not buying EA Access, but... You're going devil's advocate. The The argument that I would say is if you play one of EA sports games, just one, let's just say it's Madden every year, you're paying $30 a year for EA Access where you were before paying $60 a year for the game. This is going to get you Madden every year for half the price. And on top of that, you have access to every other sports game. So this is a smart option if you do play the Madden sports games. It is, but you can't play the full game until the following year, right? Because you only get... No, the game is released. Oh, it is? Oh, well then, yeah. If you're big into sport games or you're just big into Madden or NBA or NHL or whatever, or FIFA, then yeah, then, then you pay $30 and... Yeah, you're saving yourself half the money every year. Yeah. Now, when like when you stop paying for EA access, you're gonna lose access to those games. But at that point, who cares? All right, so that is gonna bring us to the uh, end here's, of our okay. Topic. Here's my uh, oh, sorry, my sur- summation very quickly. Summation of EA access is that EA has grossly overestimated how much people care about their games. That's all. <laughs> uh... Okay, so that is the end of our topics, but we do have a topic of the week. Now, E3 is right around the corner, and around this time is when we start. I start pestering the guys to start making their E3 predictions for the Sony press conference, but there is no e- Sony press conference this year. 
So, but there will be a Microsoft One. There will be an EA One. There will be an Ubisoft One. The only two major ones that we confirmed is Nintendo, who does directs, and Sony not attending this year at all. But according to IGN, we have a list of confirmed and rumored games coming to EA, uh, E3 this year. Uh, the games are Anthem, Apex Legends Season 2, Battlefield 5, B Simulator, Borderlands 3, Cyberpunk 2077, Doom Eternal, Dying Light 2, Farmers excuse me, Farmer's Dynasty, FIFA 20, The Fisherman, Fishing Planet, Halo Infinite, Madden, uh, Monster Hunter World, Iceborne, Overpass, Paranoia, Happiness is Mandatory, The Rift Breaker, Scavengers, Sims 4, Sinking City, uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and Werewolf Apocalypse Earthbound, and WRC 8. So those are all confirmed. Okay, so so there's two games I'm interested in. Okay, sorry, there's three games I was interested in. And let me guess. Borderlands 3. Uh, Star Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. And... I don't know. What was, what was the last one? Cyberpunk. You're really interested in Cyberpunk, huh? Well, I'm... I'm what they've showed so far... I'm interested in in the world and the game. So I'm waiting to see more of it before I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm buying that game. Right now I'm intrigued by it and I'm keeping an eye on it. Same thing with Jedi Fallen Order. I'm not sold on it yet. I I I I want to see gameplay. I want to see it in action. It, it could be canceled before we know it. Well, that goes without saying because EA's making it. You, uh, I'm sorry, Yield. You really don't like EA, Alex. They're they're the evil empire of video games. All right. Not not just that. Well, I mean, Activision's right up there with them. I think Activision's worse. But you know, as far as EA goes, like I'm not just shitting on EA because like I don't like the people that work there or their business strategy. I don't like them because they don't make any games I want to play. The last EA games I played were Dead Space Two and Plants vs Zombies. I can't think of what about um oh I just got the platinum this year and you got the platinum too. Two guys breaking out of jail. I no, I did not play that. A way I out. Did not play a way out. That is a good game. It it was e it was EA Origins that did it, and really all that they were was they were the the publisher because none of the money went to went to them, the guy kept all the money. So, I mean, yeah, EA was just the company that was, here, we're offering you this game. They, they were, that, that was it. So it's really, it's really kind of hard to, unfair to say that it was an EA game. Because it probably wouldn't have been that good. Oh! Uh, Alright, so, Alex, are any of these games you're interested in? To be honest, no, not really. The games I'm interested in this year, wanting to play, are... It's a short list. Luigi's Mansion 3 and Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. That's where the list begins and ends. I mean, there may be some games that I missed in there. There may be some things that come out. But, I don't know. I just, I don't have the fervor for playing a lot of games like I used to. Alright, so let's move on to EA... Oh, 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 I forgot. There's a third game. Psychonauts 2. I I cannot forget Psychonauts 2. Okay. Uh, Let's move on to IGN's rumored list of EA games... Or E3 games. Wow. I I keep butchering EA, E3, IGN. Alright. So here are the list of rumored games coming to E3 this year. Uh, After Party, Ancestors, The Humankind Odyssey... Animal Crossing 2019, The Avengers Product, Beyond Good and Evil 2, Control, Darkborn, Elder Scrolls Blades, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Fortnite, Gears of War 5, Gears Pop, Gears Tactics, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, Ori and the Will of the Wisp, Outer Wilds, The Other The Outer Worlds, Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. Skull and Bones, Tunic, and and Wolfenstein Youngblood. Okay, 
So I was going to say there better be some skull and bones this year because, th- th- yeah, th- this has been kind of Ubisoft saying that they dropped two years ago and then they kind of dropped a little bit more this year. This needs to be the, the here's, here's gameplay footage, here's release date, yada yada because this because if not then people i think people are going to kind of start to lose interest for skull and bones and then beyond good and evil what what little tidbit that i saw was it last year i think that i because i have not been at all with the franchise at all that looked really fun and interesting so that's it so there's four games five games just name alone that I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm interested in. Now, there might be some of them other little games that you mentioned that I don't really know anything about that when I see a trailer, I could go, ooh, that seems interesting. But those are those are five games that I'm looking forward to. Yeah, I want to see how Beyond Good and Evil turns out. I did like the first game, and we've kind of had this game, like, dangled in our in front of our face by Ubisoft for years and years now. It feels like, you know, decades even at this point. So I want to see how that turns out. I don't know if I'm going to buy it, but I definitely want to see what the end product looks like. And Pokemon Sword and Shield. Uh, Pokemon Go has kind of reinvigorated my interest in the series, and I remember how much I had fun playing Red and Blue back in the day on my Ice my ice Blue Game Boy that I got for Christmas. So Pokemon Sword and, Sword and Shield is uh, is a game that I'm interested in very much. So, All right. Uh, don't the games that I'm interested in is oh, 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 it's lost the list. Uh, the Avengers Project. I want to know what the hell's going on with that game. Turns from what we hear, it's a third person, uh, self game. I'm kind of interested. Uh, Control. I played at PAX. Uh, I'm not too impressed with it. Uh, and Ghost Recon Breakpoint and Skull and Bones. Those are games I'm interested in seeing. All right, so I'm disappointed to hear that Control yeah. didn't didn't play that well. That you didn't like it because the game looks really cool. I mean, you can make any game look good in a trailer in vertical slices, but it I mean, it did look like it made you all powerful badass. So it's disappointing to hear that. Uh, I mean, in Remedy is a good developer. They did Alan Wake. So I mean, I'm not like I said. I'm I'm saying it's a bad game. You know, maybe you know I was cranky and what well, you're always cranky. And I demoed it. But you don't get any sleep. Uh yeah, I don't get any sleep. Okay, come on. Housekeeping, let's go. I got some days gone. I got to get to Oregon. Let's go. Provengamer.com is looking for some help. <laughs> We're looking for some writers, podcasters, video editors, and news reporters. If you're interested in applying, go to Provengamer.com. Click on the Help Watch tab and fill out the application. I will... Get back to you as soon as We're I can. We're also looking for people well, who can there. pronounce names on podcasts. Frank Castle. Uh, while you're there, be sure to check out all the articles and all the videos. Now, I say that, and I've been saying that for 300 episodes. We haven't posted an article in quite a long time, and there's going to be a reason for that, and we're going to announce that soon. Uh, yeah. Uh, but we do have videos. They're on YouTube. You are an official Proven Gamer. You can also catch me and our new streamer, Smoked Out 760 uh, streaming on Twitch. You're mostly going to get uh, him because that boy plays video games 24-7 and he's constantly streaming and every time I want to go stream, I can't. So you guys can't watch me play Days Gone. Yep, you all can't so. see tr- Tricky struggle, struggle through get Days Gone. I'm sure your days are much worse off. Uh, dude, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, sir. Pro tip for you, Yield. If you see a, a, a freaker just randomly in the woods, do not take that out freaker out with noise. If that freaker sees you, there may be a horde of 500 freakers that are going to come out of a cave and take you down. There's, there's all, It's like velociraptors. There's always one hiding in the bushes that you don't see. I was clearing out this area... And there was about 10 Freakers, visually, that I saw. I killed 9 self, we got to the 10th one, and the 10th Freaker just happened to turn as I was getting to it. And, I, yeah, I panicked. Uh, and I went to hit it with a, my melee weapon, completely missed. 
turn around, use my focus, and one shot it. And it just so happened that the one time I shot it, my silencer uh, dissipated finally. So the shot rang out loud. And I'm thinking, okay, all done, start scavenging. All of, all of a sudden, from behind me, a horde of 600 freakers come running at me. You didn't make it, did you? No, I did not. You were too far away from your bike, weren't you? I never saw them coming. Ah, uh, that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get a hold of us, there are several ways to get a hold of us. The first one is our email. So it's the... The business email, the Memorial Troy email, it's trophyhorse at provinggamer.com. That's trophyhorse at provinggamer.com. That's trophyhorse at provinggamer.com. If you want to get a hold of us, there are several ways to get a hold of us on Twitter. There's the site, Proving Gamer, the show, Trophy Horse. Excuse me. I'm taking that out of that show. That's me, Tricky Mick, Alex, Saundersaurus Rex. Yield, I yield to no one. And Sid is Sidney76. It's just Sidney, isn't it? I don't know. Because it's, it's sitters and then numbers on the PSN. It's just sitterny. He, he, here's the way I use Twitter nowadays. If somebody asks me, I respond to them. Otherwise, it's just a list of my PSN uh, profiles link every time I earn a trophy. Somebody goes, I earned this many trophies, and I get a like from uh, somebody, uh, normally it's Andrew, who liked it. <laughs> Other than that, I really don't use Twitter. I don't use Twitter to communicate with people. I just re- use it to respond to people. Oh, see, I use Twitter to communicate with people. You see, I use Facebook to do that. You use Twitter. See, yeah. See, I don't. Facebook's. I use. Yeah, I don't use Facebook much. I use it for private messaging. And that's about it. Twitter is my way to complain about things that I don't like that happen in Game of Thrones and things that are going on in Pokemon Go that I don't like. That is my main. Use of Speaking of which, I, I I have to ask you guys. He's such a good boy. Al- Just give him a hug, John. Alex, did- <laughs> Alex, did you watch when you watched the battle? Did you see everything clearly? Or was it black and blurry to you? Uh, I mean, it was really dark. I mean, they the uh, executive producers D and D they uh, they have talked about how they wanted because you know it's a medieval setting. They often light scenes with candles. I mean, they're not going to have like huge spotlights and floodlights in the battlefield. It was hard to see, so I mean, I, I understand people's complaints. It's not just their TVs. It's not just your TV. It was kind of hard to see a lot of things. It's hard to follow the dragon fights at some points, and the battle itself. So I mean, the lighting was definitely an issue. But I think that's just the way they went with the medieval setting, and they intended it to be that dark. And well, it was a horrible decision because I didn't see shit. You need better glasses. Well, then you will be more surprised when the surprise happens. <gasps> Uh, or, or you mean like when they leave the Starbucks cup on set? Yeah, like that one. Uh, phone number yield. How they call us? Three three zero proven nine three three zero seven seven six eight three six nine. Uh, what other podcasts do we have yield? Uh, we have PG spoilers. Although they say they're doing one, and they did one a while ago, but none of them are ever be as good as the uh, Tomb Raider one that Tricky lost. And then you've got. This one, Trophy Horrors, and you got Game Stuff, and you got Dual Screens. Before you hear this episode, uh, just know that Daryl has recorded two more episodes of PG Spoilers. I have just yet to post them. But they will be posted by the time you hear this. He did one on Batman Aliens, and then there's another one on Hidden Agenda. Is that a super massive game? Uh, Hidden Agenda, yes. That that's the one you play with your phones. Ah, it's actually pretty good. Uh, do you, do you guys watch um, uh, Arrow or Flash or any of those CW superhero I shows? I don't like DC, so Arrow, Arrow's a very good show. I'm very uh, very upset they're ending it after next season. If only their movies could be as good as their television series. Wonder Woman wasn't bad. Wonder Woman's like the only one. And Aquaman was entertaining. I haven't heard many many reviews that says Aquaman's good. I I Aquaman was good. I actually think I liked Aquaman better than I liked Wonder Woman. 
Ooh, no, 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 no. Oh, we we can have a discussion about it, but I I I can prove I can convince you. I I'm sure that you could because I I I enjoyed Aquaman, but I thought Wonder Woman was a better movie. Just my opinion. I forgot where it was. Oh, podcasts. Uh, they can be. They can be found on Apple Podcasts, follow me, iTunes, Stitcher, your various podcast applications on your smart devices, Google Play, tune in, and you can listen to Trophy Horrors and Nintendo Dual Screens on iHeartRadio and Spotify. Uh, for everybody that was asking, I am trying to get us on Pandora, but that is a biatch. Biatch. PlayStation 4 communities. There's one for the site, Proving Gamer. There's one for the show called T-Dust Brothel. Why, Alex? Shuhei Yoshida, the man that we love, president of Worldwide Studios... Won't let us say whores on the network. Yes. And by the way, uh, PSA, uh, PSA, well, yeah, public service announcement, PSA. Uh, if you are my PSN friends list and you have changed your name, you have approximately one week to let me know who the hell you are because if I don't recognize your name, you're getting removed. I'm the, ar- I'm the artist formerly known as. Or the gamer. I'm the gamer formerly known as. I, I am so tired of getting requests from things and like, who are you? And then they don't respond or they respond like, you don't know who I am. I've been on your friends list for two years. Uh, dumbass, you changed your name. I have no idea who the hell you are. If I don't know who the hell you are, you're getting removed. Bottom line. That's it. That's it. I'm changing my name now. Well, I'll know who you are, dumbass. <laughs> No, you don't. No, you don't, because you don't have your notifications turned on, so you won't know who I am. Uh, with that being said, that is the end of our housekeeping, but we do have some sponsors. Uh, first sponsor is Extra Life. Alex, tell us about Extra Life. This year, Extra Life is happening on November 2nd. If you don't know what Extra Life is, it is a annual gaming marathon. It's a charity event run to benefit the Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals. If you want more information or you want to sign up, you can go to extra-life.org. You can join a team, create your own team, or play solo if you like. If you're participating, you pick a Children's Miracle Network hospital to represent, and from there, you collect donations, or we call them sponsorships, for your 24-25 hour marathon, however it works out this year. Uh, What you need to tell people who donate to your marathon is that 100% of the proceeds that you collect go to the Children's Miracle Network hospital that you are opting to represent. The motto for Extra Life is Play Games, Heal Kids, and it is the absolute best example of a win-win situation that you can find. Uh, you'll tell us about Amazon. If you go to provengamer.com on the side of the screen, there is a Amazon ad. If you click on it, it will take you straight to the Amazon page and you can do your order as you normally would and doesn't cost you anything extra. Proven Gamer gets a little bit of the kickback and it helps us get nice cushy chairs here in the studio. It helps keep the lights on. It may, we, we may even get Tricky a cot so he can go to sleep. Absolutely. And by the way, you have to do that every time you shop on Amazon, not just one time, Alex. So if you if you shop at Amazon and we, and we know people do, you you know, you could help us out. All right, and our Patreon, which is patreon.com backslash proven gamer. If you could go there, check it out. There's different tiers you can support us at, whether it's the one dollar level all the way up to a hundred dollar level. I think there's actually a tier for two hundred. No matter what tier you support us at, no, it helps. It helps appreciate keep the lights on. I said that sentence awkwardly, but you know what the hell I'm trying to say. Uh, if you are Amazon Prime, also you are Twitch Prime. If you could and would link your two accounts, come to Twitch.tv backslash Proven Gamer and click that sub for free button. You have to do it every month, but hey, Tricky's a nice guy. He will remind you. Hey, your Twitch subs up. Time to renew. It's good. Uh, but with that being said, let's close out the show with some shout outs. Uh, my shout out is Days Gone. Hello, sweet Mama D. The goddess. I want to go. No, I'm going to do it my end the end. Uh, Alex, your shout out, sir. Give a shout out first and foremost to the listeners. Thank you all very much for spending some time with us every week. You're the fuel to the fire. That is Trophy Horse. show would not be at this point without you all. Thank you for your continued support for helping us get on iHeartRadio, on Spotify, hopefully on Pandora someday. Uh, but thank you all very much for being supporters of the show. Give a shout out for to Tricky and Yield for recording today. So give a shout out to Ghost, one of my favorite Game of Thrones characters who did not get the proper send off last week. He deserved a lot more than just a, a look, a sad look from John. He deserved pets, hugs, 
kisses on the head, all that. So more love for Ghost. Big shout out to one of my favorite Game of Thrones characters. And a shout out to, to my awesome loving girlfriend, Ashley, who um, encouraged me on Mother's Day today to spend some time with my mom, invite her out to dinner with or to brunch with us. Uh, my mom is not, she and I have not had the greatest relationship, but, you know, hopefully, you know, as, as we both get older, we can learn to um, just kind of, uh, you know, be uh, be better together and just kind of, um, I don't know, to accept each other's flaws and just kind of work towards a better relationship than we have now. So I, I definitely want to thank my awesome girlfriend, Aww. Ashley, for suggesting that and just being a great partner in general. Thank you, honey. I love you. Aww. Yield your shout-outs. So I would like to give a shout-out to Bernard Dyer Scum, Homer Gets Duffed, and Harry Balls Up. Don't be hating. And Harry balls on you for playing some awesome Rocket League and everybody's golf Saturday. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Tricky and Alex for showing up to record this week. Uh, even though Tricky was going to fluff us off and play Days Gone. Uh, a shout out to you, all the pimps in the Madisons of Hordom. Thank you for downloading, listening interacting with us, doing everything that is cool. And shout out to Wargaming.net because I enjoy World of Warships Legends, even though I'm not very good at it. I still enjoy it. I'm done I'm done with my shout outs. Tricky, shout outs. Let's go. Close this son of a gun up. I want to give a shout out to the goddess. Uh, shout out to Sweet Mama D, who is not with me today because it's Mother's Day and she's with her mother. Uh, as appropriately. Uh, shout out to the listeners. Shout out to everybody who listens to the show. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, twerp you to Homer Gets Stuff. Play some fucking rock band. Show up to band practice. Biatch. Did, did anybody play this week? Because you've been playing Days Gone. Nobody has played. Nobody's played in two weeks. Including you last week. Well, then you know what? Then we'll just start back over at the start. When did the next season start? Uh, in a month and a half. But we can still get prizes for this season. If people just show up to ho- practice, Homer gets stuffed. Oh, l- listen, I don't ask for much. Just show up to band practice. That's all I ask. Wait, when is band practice? The last time I played, you were online and you didn't even send me an invite. Because you don't tell me when you're online. That's what they got notifications on the corner of the screen. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that shit. Until next week, happy trophy hunting. Bye, everybody. Homer ain't got time to be playing rock band with you. He got better shit to do. So we're stopping, aren't we? As soon as you say goodbye. I did. He said, he said, Homer ain't got time for your crap. The theme song is Venus by the band Even off their album Zenith. Permission granted by the band and 12 Stone Records. You can find them on Facebook by going to www.facebook.com slash evenphilippines. <laughs>